just also wanted to mention, could you talk a bit about all the different side jobs you had? Because you, you kind of, from the outside, seem like a, a person who likes extreme challenges, whether it's triathlon or ice climbing and such stuff. I think you said it's, that was the best summer job you ever had. I think you did it for many, many years. Could you talk a bit about those experiences as well and how that has influenced you in, in life? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, the very first thing I did actually was... Um, uh, you know, I, I started a chicken farm when I was young. So I, I, I asked my parents uh, if, if I could buy some chickens. And, and, and chickens are pretty cheap because, like, you, know, you can buy an egg for uh, two Norwegian kroma um, uh, at the time, at least. Um, or I, I can't remember if it was one or two. Uh, so I bought, you know, 20, 20 eggs and you put them under a, a lamp and uh, you know they turn into chicken and, and some of them become hens and they will start producing eggs uh, one egg a day on average so that you know I think at the time I had you know a maximum of 20 hens uh, there on the countryside which generated you know 20 eggs uh, per day which I sold for two kroner each so that's you know uh, 40 kroners uh, income per day which is quite a lot at least was quite a lot at the time uh, at the young age, uh, so um, that's the first thing I did. Um, um, the most exciting summer job I had was, yeah, definitely the glacier guiding. Um, you know, uh, my father is uh, is born and, and grew up at Finse, which is in the in the mountains of Norway. It's where the railway goes over from Oslo to Bergen. It's the highest lying railway station in, in northern Europe, and um, um, it's, it's just an incredible place with an incredible amount of history. It's where the Norwegian polar explorers and, and even Scott um, uh, trained before their expeditions to the South Pole and North Pole. Um, it's where a lot of the aristocracy of Europe would go on their winter vacations because you could take the train straight up into the mountains. It's where the Star Wars Snow Planet movie was filmed. Um, so it's this place with an incredible uh, amount of history and um, my great great grandmother actually built that hotel. So the the Finso Hotel was um, originally a, a, a hut that served the, the railway engineers that uh, was building the the Bergen railway. And uh, when the railway opened, uh, she turned it into a, a hotel. Um, and uh, you know, I'm very happy to actually have been able to to invest in that hotel last year. So now, you know, a small portion of the hotel is is back under. Uh, you know, our, our family, which is very excited with, with a set of really, really exciting other Norwegian investors and uh, the Norman family who's taken incredibly good care of that hotel over the last few years. So it's, it's, it's a place that I've meant a lot to the family. Also my, great grand, uh, also, my grandfather used to run the railway up there. So you know, we'd go there and spend our summers always up there, hiking, uh, biking, mountain climbing. And uh, I got the opportunity through... Uh, uh, Kjell and Eirik, who runs this uh, organization called Jörgla Gutana, uh, to uh, be a glacier guide there, which literally means you take 15 people um, on the glacier every day. So you meet them on the railway station in the morning, you walk for about an hour up to the glacier, you put everyone into crampons, ice axes, and, uh, and ropes, and uh, show them around on the glacier, climb into some crevasses, and tell stories about uh, Finse and about glacier and about geology. And I did that from my, uh, when I was 19, and uh, from when I was 20 years until I was 26, uh, uh, I did that over the summers. And uh, you learn an incredible amount when you meet 50 new people every day, you get to share six, seven hours with them in an environment where they feel, um, um, you know, a little bit uncomfortable. So meaning they're pushing their edges, uh, which means they, they share their feelings and emotions in a very different way. So you learn a lot about storytelling. You learn a lot about uh, other people, how to interact with them, and also how to deal with people who are, you know, sometimes um, at the edge of extremity, you know, now and then we'd have some accidents up there and we need to call in the helicopter and get people out. So, um, you know, this, you know, I'd really encourage uh, everyone uh, to do um, you know some of those things and, and not go into too much of a uniform pattern um, at the young age but but try different experiences and and through that you will learn these things that you wouldn't have imagined right I mean you know one of the things you would imagine uh, 
being a glacier guide is you get in really great shape and <laughs> you know <laughs> because you walk around but you know that's that's a small part of it the big part of it is really getting to know human beings and uh, and their stories and actually a lot of the people i brought up there has later become very good friends of mine um, that have been very meaningful for me and in things i've done later in my life 